So today we're going to talk about why a man might choose one woman or another. Now, when we examine this, I think it's really important that in most cases, all things aren't equal. In other words, each woman is unique to herself. So there's going to be some differences. But what I want to talk about is where men, how men typically choose a woman in their life and also explore those things that men choose. The, I was going to say the type of women they tend to avoid. And, and why, why I want to lean into this for a second is because I've been watching some YouTube videos lately talking about men who are rejecting women significantly. And I think this might be the younger population, but certainly it might be for those in midlife as well, is women who have what's known as a high body count, a high body count. And what I mean to say is these are, well, According to these YouTubers, these are women who have had many, many sexual partners. And because of that, a man won't deem that, wor that woman worthy to actually commit in a relationship. Now, while that might be true, that might be a very fair statement that people who have a promiscuous nature um, might be less desirable. But let me ask you something, and this is for the women in my audience. You know, do you actually really care how many men or how many women a man has slept with? In fact, do you even ask that question? I think someone's past sexual experiences to some degree should be remain private. And what I mean to say is, well, it's, it's important to explore someone's past relationship experiences, but for those who have had one night stands or very short lived experiences, is it really necessary to know about that? Now, what's interesting is I've spoken to a significant number of men and women who have actually had sex on the first date with a woman and have eventually gone on to a fully committed relationship. Now, while that might be the exception and not the rule, that certainly has happened. So I don't like that that's the criteria someone rejects a woman, one woman over another, that a woman who tends to be more virtuous might be a better partner. Now, again, someone younger might view things like that. But for those of us who are in midlife, we most of us have gone through a divorce. We've had several relationships in our lives. So it's probably natural you've had several sexual partners. OK, so I don't think that's warrants enough to exclude one woman over another. Now, there might be one, uh, there might be several reasons why a man might choose one woman over another, and that might be how this woman's lifestyle compares to his own lifestyle. Now, what I mean by lifestyle is I know for those of us in midlife, and women say the exact same thing about men that women, men say about women, what I'm about to share as I've noticed a significant number of men and women prefer not to date someone who's currently in the active role of raise, raising children. Now this tends to be for those that are already um, empty nesters. They prefer not to be with a woman who's actively raising children. And that's not always the case. And I know so many women who say the same thing. I don't want to be with a man who's actively raising children. So that might be a reason why a man might choose one woman over another is depending on their lifestyle. And actually, when we talk about lifestyle, it's not just the raising of children. It might be their, their uh, professional capacity if they have someone. I know, who, I know, for example, I know one woman who didn't want to date a man who was a realtor because he was always working uh, on the weekends. And I've known men to say the same thing about women or realtors. And there's no disrespect for that. I'm just saying that we all have our own unique versions of a deal breaker when it comes to relationships. I know some men, I know one man in particular says, I don't want to date a woman who is in debt because I don't want to take on her debt if we end up getting married at some point or we bond in a significant relationship. That's one example. By the way, when I think of debt, I'm not talking about having a mortgage on a home and or a car loan kind of debt, but someone who is in credit card debt, that was his deal breaker. OK, and women, you have your own deal breakers, too. I think the real question here is why would a man choose one woman over another or choose another woman over you centers around a couple factors that I'm going to lean into right now. Now, one of the first thing is I've noted I've witnessed that most men need to be physically attracted to their partner. 
And by the way, women need to feel this too, but you know, the definition of a physical attraction might be, you know, men might have a higher on the scale than women, although that might not always be the case, but they must feel a sense that they feel physically attracted to this partner, this woman, and also that there is sexual compatibility within that physical attraction. I think the fact that men are, you know, have been not bred, but we instinctively have this mm -hmm. desire to spread our seed, to be physically sexual with a woman, mm -hmm. that it's not uncommon that a man will choose a woman that he feels like can give him a rare erection, that gets him aroused, and also fits his lifestyle when it comes to sexual compatibility. And the fact of the matter is not all women are the same in this capacity. Some women are quite different than others. Some women are very docile. Some women are very ambivalent in the area of sex. And this might be a reason why a man might choose a one woman over another. And let me be clear about this. There are plenty of men who are terrible in bed. There are plenty of men that are indifferent about sex. So this isn't, you know, women have every right to want to be with a male partner that has that sexual prowess, that sexual desire. I think as we get into the third chapter of our lives, for those of us that are in our 50s plus, we want, many of us want to have a healthy sex life. But for those in their 60s, 70s, that may not be as important for some versus others, okay? But I will say this. A man typically chooses a woman. One of the factors centers around how physically attracted to is and how sexual compatible they are. And so a man might choose another woman because it fits his sexual compatibility over a different woman or another woman, let's say. The most important factor men consider when it comes to choosing a woman all centers around how they feel about this person. How do they truly feel with this person? Do they feel a connection with this person? We're going to talk about four things in particular that men and women need to feel a sense of connection with another human being. And when we go beyond connection, we also need to talk about the importance of trust in a relationship because ultimately a man chooses a woman based on that physical attraction and sexual compatibility, feelings, which we're going to lean into some of those, and also the alignment in the area of have they built trust with one another. Okay. So what are those four factors that represent the feelings for a man? Well, I think the first one centers around attention. Does this person in my life give me enough attention? Do they fill my need for when I want a connection with someone. Now, this is tricky again, going back to the lifestyle, because some women have more of a flexible lifestyle than another. I'm using lifestyle as an, act, an, an, an example, so they can give more attention to a man than another woman. And remember I said in the beginning of this conversation, we really, is all things are not equal. Each person is unique unto themselves. So there's all these little multitude of factors that play like what I'm sharing right now, because attention leads into affection. And I, I, I suspect, like most of you, you want to have physical affection in your relationship. In fact, if you're not familiar with the book, The Five Love Languages, by the way, um, here, if you're not familiar, here's a copy of the book, The Five Love Languages. All the books I recommend are, uh, are in the uh, link below in the show notes if you want to check out the books that I recommend. In The Five Love Languages, one of the love languages, physical touch. And from what I've observed, that is usually a man's sec first, second, or third highest love language to feel that physical affection. I suspect it's the same for you as ladies as well. So we just talked about attention, making a person a priority, making them important in your life. That's critically important. Certainly affection, that physical touch, that connecting with someone. And it's not just sexual. It could be just touching his hand or running your fingers through his hair. Mm -hmm. That feeling of physical connection can create a bond with one woman over another. Next is appreciation. You know, I've observed that most men's 
complaints after a divorce centers around not feeling truly appreciated in their marriage. That, that's oftentimes one of their biggest complaints. I think humans in general do a very poor job of appreciating one another in relationship. In fact, we oftentimes take people for granted. I think this is all set up in the dating right from the very get-go. I know a lot of women operate from this entitlement perspective. I expect a man to court me, and I expect a man to pay for everything, and I expect a man to do this, and I expect to do a man to do that. Now, it's okay to desire things, but when you come from a place of expectation, it takes away from the place of generosity when a man is giving to a woman, when a man genuinely gives to a woman and he's not appreciated for his efforts, this might cause a man to choose one woman over another. In fact, um, not too long ago, some weeks back, I witnessed this watching a couple. This man was very generous to this person and yet he wasn't appreciated for his efforts. And when a man doesn't feel appreciated, He's less likely to feel good because remember I said physically attracted to sexually compatible and feels good. What feels good is being appreciated for one's efforts. And let me say this. I'm not a big fan of the words thank you. And while that's certainly used uh, frequently, we can thank the barista at the coffee shop. We can thank the teller at the, at the bank. We can certainly thank the grocery clerk for bagging your groceries. I want to invite you all to begin the words, I appreciate you in your lexicon. I really appreciate that you did this. I'm so grateful that you took me on this vacation. I'm so grateful that you took me out to this restaurant. Start using the word appreciation, gratitude, or excuse me, grateful in your lexicon, as I said a moment ago, as within your, your daily uh, word uh, salad, if you will, when it comes to men, men oftentimes feel a lack of appreciation. And ladies, I recognize you feel a lack of appreciation within men. It's very, it's very, very common that humans take one another for granted. So at least you can start by setting the example. And if you set the example by demonstrating appreciation on a regular basis, and he's not reciprocating with that verbiage, then you got to ask yourself, does this person genuinely care? I want you to always think about these, these titles in the videos. Just remember, it's not about the man. This is about you. At the same time, I want to give you tools to understand how men operate. And the fourth thing, before we get into trust, is recognizing that all men and women want to feel accepted for who they are, accepted for who they are. There's an old saying that men marry women hoping they don't change and women marry men hoping they do change. Well, that's literally you have this idea of how you want to change a guy into your narrative. And this isn't true for all women. At the same time, a man wants to feel accepted for who he is, for how he shows up. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't improve, and that doesn't mean you should accept a man uh, from the perspective of being a doormat in a relationship. I'm here to completely reject that submissive narrative that many of those YouTubers out there are trying to uh, impose upon women is a submissive nature. Acceptance isn't submissive. Acceptance is just recognizing that we, you know, here's the thing. Personalities are fixed. Behaviors can be changed. Personality is fixed. So I've got, you know, my personality can be a little bit brash and a little smart ass. And I believe my partner, Marie, accepts that part of my personality. My behaviors can change. Learning to put down the toilet seat, that's a behavior. And I've, I jokingly about this because, uh, and it's not an issue in our relationship, but I joke about it because there are things we can change within our behavior, but at the same time, we can't change our personality. So you have to accept our personality the way it is. And if you don't accept our personality the way it is, then we don't feel that desire. We might choose one woman over another. Now, within acceptance, I began to share this moment ago, is that sense of trust. See, it's that physical attraction, that sexual compatibility, feelings, feeling good in the air of attention, affection, appreciation, and acceptance. Because within acceptance, 
comes a level of feeling safe with this person, to feel like you can truly be yourself. See, trust isn't just about fidelity. Trust is, can I count on this person to be there for me when I need them? Do they have my best interest at heart? See, most couples don't spend nearly enough time building up trust in a relationship. They're going through the motions. I think, in fact, I've even said recently that dating today is just a long strung out version of friends with benefits because very few couples are actually co-creating a relationship based on trust and trust comes through teamwork, being a team. And yet many of you are fixated on relationships where your entire communication, your entire connection is through these devices. You're spending more time talking through these devices than actually connecting with one another to build the deep roots of trust through emotional connection, through economic agreement, through social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, through family and friends. And lastly, through intimacy, and I don't mean sexual intimacy, I mean emotional intimacy to go with the physical intimacy. And many of you women are, do such a poor job in choosing men that you find yourself attacked, attacked hooked on a guy who's completely, incom completely incompatible with you. This is why I created my private coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call and in the show notes. My job is to help you design the questions you should be asking yourself and him to determine if you're compatible with one another. Because guess what? Compatibility isn't based on chemistry. See, most people believe chemistry equals relationship success. And I'm here to say shared values, blendable lifestyles, and emotional maturity are the building blocks to a successful relationship. And if you need some help with that, let's get on the phone. Let's see if I can help you. All right, I've just outlined why a man chooses one woman over another. The reality is, is there's so many different moving parts. It doesn't matter why a man might choose another woman over you. What matters most is, are you choosing the right man? Are you choosing the right man? That matters most than what a man does. Because everything I shared in this video is interchangeable between men and women. Because we all want to feel physically desired. We all want to feel that sexual compatibility. We want, all want to feel attention, affection, appreciation, acceptance. And most importantly, we all want to dive into trust because all, at the end of the day, that's the person we choose, the one we feel safest with. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. If it is, post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. All right, I'm going to wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big, gigantic Jonathan Barrick of self-love. I'm going to reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm going to ask you to turn this on a pet teddy bear a pillow and give it or them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love. And let's face it, we could all use more love in our lives. Thanks a bunch. Bye now. Bye.